the founder and executive chairman of WEF, uh, Dr. Schwab, Professor Schwab, says this year's event is more important than ever, given the challenges that the, work is facing, the world is facing. Klaus Schwab says it's crucial that leaders meet in person as it helps create trust between them. You see every day how the world is falling apart with the different crises which we have to manage. And you can exchange in small circles ideas, you can take certain decisions, but it was so important to bring the global community, the global stakeholder community together in person again, because it's only the personal interaction which creates trust or which recreates trust. Isn't the reality, though, that everything that Davos stands for is on the verge of failure. Give you an example. Number one, the war in Ukraine. All the idea of uh, some sort of common views on, 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 a, on a European way forward. Number two, China. Unilaterally shut down, everybody else is open. Number three, we're failing on our climate, change, uh, climate targets. So what's the purpose? First, Davos never has been as important as it is now particularly for the reasons you mentioned. We cannot prevent the war in uh, Ukraine. We cannot uh, take away COVID and so on. But we can create coordinated responses to those challenges. And that's what we are doing. And those challenges need the cooperation of business, civil society, and, of course, mainly politics. Right. So why didn't you invite Russians? Because if dialogue is so important, then wouldn't it have been better to have had those non-sanctioned Russians at the table? You are right. But at the end, the decision what Russia will do depends on Putin. And you have seen uh, Guterres, uh, Macron and so on uh, trying to build a bridge. Um, so the so time is not yet ripe, but we are ready and we have announced it as soon as the time is ripe to offer our bridge building um, capabilities again. The bridge building capabilities will be important, yes. But don't you need a moment of introspection to ask how did it go so wrong? How did, the, the, you know, Davos, and when I say Davos, I don't you mean you personally, I mean the community, spent decades bringing, trying to bring Russia into the global community and be part of the global community, only for President Putin to literally go the opposite direction and start a war. Yes, and we regret it, but if you look at global affairs, some certain developments go into the right direction, and even the Forum and even Davos cannot prevent that certain issues are not developing as we would like have them to do. In that sense, it's going to be more difficult because we're also entering economic great difficulties, truly awful times. We've got inflation, the like of which we've not seen for 40 years. Yes, we have, uh, apart from all the political conflicts, yeah. we have a uh, global economy which is out of balance. And what I want to highlight particularly here is the consequences. Um, we may have little influence on how the central banks decide about the future policies, but we know that if we don't change course, we will have hundreds of millions of people falling back into poverty we have tens of millions probably dying, possibly, of hunger. So this is a misery, and we have to address it. So to bring it at the forefront of our uh, topics here, of our program, and to generate action, that's my intention. There's never been a more important time and a more, a more serious time for these talks to be taking place. Yes, um, that's also um, reflected in the mood. I mean, it's the most consequential meeting which we ever had in the last 20, uh, 50 years, I would say. And um, the mood will be much more serious, much more concerned uh, compared to the previous years, because we are at the turning point of history.